everybody. This is Mike Nelson from KDMA and Bigfoot FM. I'm here with uh, Jay Ernest of the band uh, Church of Cass. How are you doing today, Jay? I'm doing well. Thanks for having me on. And uh, Jay, when did you first get into music? You know, wh wh what's your musical journey? When did it all kick off for you, Jay? I started singing at a very young age. Um, I went to a little Lutheran school and when you go to those kind of schools, you're singing hymns, you're singing um, songs of praise a lot. So I started singing at a very young age. And uh, by the time I was around 11 o'clock, I already went through puberty. And I'll, I'll get to why that's important, because I was in the choir at that time, and my voice was an octave lower than all the boys in class. And my teacher would often say, Jay, up the octave to join the other boys, as my voice was quite a bit lower than the rest at that time. So I was always a singer, always really enjoyed singing, was in a lot of musicals and plays and, and a lot of the choirs all throughout my high school and even into college. Uh, but then rock and roll also uh, got to be a part of my life around the age of 13. I bought my first guitar and was playing in bands uh, probably at the age of 15 starting anyway. So it's, it's, it's been a long time. Um, with my relationship with the guitar and then also being a singer. And uh, what did you use specifically to Johnny Cash? Was that something at a young age or how did that happen for you, Jay? My father is a huge Johnny Cash fan. Now you can understand growing up on the farm, you, you know, the dad always had the A track playing Johnny Cash. He would be singing these songs while we did a lot of farm work. So I was exposed to Johnny Cash at a very young age. I mean, realistic, I didn't even know who Johnny Cash was. It's, I just thought it was my dad singing. It wasn't until later I found out, oh, well, these are Johnny Cash songs. Well, then a little later after that, maybe about 15 years ago, I was living in Hawaii, and uh, I was touring with some other bands based out of Hawaii, and I got invited to uh, move there and playing with these bands. And it got to be a point where I wanted to play more music, so I... I had a gig at the local Irish bar in downtown Chinatown, which was part of Honolulu. So that's kind of a crazy cultural uh, intersection there. But we had a lot of fun playing music at this Irish bar. And every time I was playing there, I would play Johnny Cash. And people put down their beers and just stared at me. And I was very curious. Did they think I stink or... <laughs> Or did they enjoy it? That They would often tell me that my voice, when I sing, sounds a lot like Johnny Cash. Very good compliment, and it was not long after that, I decided to put together a Johnny Cash tribute show called The Church of Cash, which I showcase Johnny Cash music. Now, talking about Johnny Cash, what, what, do, you, what do you think is, uh, you know, what, what is, is music, how important do you think it is to, to like, you know, the, the music history, you know, Johnny Cash, his figure, the music he put out, you know, can you talk about the importance of Johnny Cash just in, in music and in music in general, not just country? Sure. Well, you got to imagine that when uh, the Folsom at Folsom prison record that was recorded in 1968 and it was, it was, it won album of the year for country and also album of the year uh, in rock and roll. So it was in the, in the music scene, that was a first it's never really happened. It's never happened before. So that album in particular is very, very important for music. Beyond that, socially, Johnny Cash is the man in black. That was his persona that started coming around 1970, 1969, around that era. And his persona was like he was going to be representing the poor and beaten down. You can hear his lyrics in the song, The Man in Black, where he's basically stating his purpose as the man in black and who he wants to uh, bring attention to, who maybe some, some group that has, that has, that needs help or under, under representative or, or maybe has, or somebody has some hate towards and he steps out and say, I'm going to, I'm going to be the man in black. I'm going to be the person that represents you. And socially that was, kind of new for the time it seems to be you know very much in fashion now but back in those days it was not in fashion at all nobody wanted to be the advocate for the uh, for the american indian and he wasn't a, a, an advocate for them um which is demonstrated by the song by ray hayes which is uh a, a native american marine officer 
in Iwo Jima. He was an is a Navajo, and he fought in the Battle of Iwo Jima, and his this he's bringing attention to this fellow named Ira Hayes. When he released the song, he none of the DJs in Nashville would play it. And they just didn't have the courage to. They thought it was controversial at the time. So Johnny Cash, at that point, put out a full-page ad in the Nashville newspaper admonishing all those DJs that didn't have the guts to, to play that song on the radio. So that's the kind of person Johnny Cash was. He had, you know, Obviously, the music is pretty impactful on the zeitgeist. But not only that, he was, he was, he was, a, a, he was a justice warrior out there battling for the poor and beaten down. Now let's talk a little bit about the event that's happening this Saturday in Dawson. You know, for Arcadia May listeners, um, Church of Cash is going to be part of a big event uh, with the. Uh, well, can you explain a little bit about what's happening this Saturday in, in Dawson, Jay? Yeah, of course. A good friend of mine, his name is Tom Pickard. Um, him and I, over the COVID, we, I call it the COVID break because a lot of musicians and artists were grounded at that point. We had no shows. Uh, we've worked together many times. He owns venues and he owes, and he's a very much a, a big figure in the music industry. We talked about putting this thing together called the Folsom prison experience. And, uh, we just thought, oh, we'll get around to it sooner or later, but that was our time. We had both had time on our hands. So we, we penned it. So the whole, the idea of the show is when the audience member comes in, you are now transported back to 1968 and you are now an inmate and Folsom Prison, watching Johnny Cash play his show with June Carter, the Statler brothers, the warden will be there, the MC of the night, his name is Hugh Cherry, he'll be there, and some other special guest stars. The guards will guide you to your seat, much like the ushers, but like I said, you are now an inmate. So it's a bit of an immersion theater. When the, when the warden walks around, people love to boo him. And he's the real antagonist of the day. And Johnny Cash is obviously the hero of the day. And there's that interplay of, of working with the audience as, uh, as Johnny Cash would be, you know, singing to them. The warden will, will be the, uh, be the bad guy. It's, it's very much where a, a moment where the audience is transported there. We give you little numbers on your chest, like your your prisoner numbers, and you you unless the whole idea is unless you committed a heinous crime back in the in the middle '60s, you are not at Folsom Prison. So we're here to reenact that time when Johnny Cash played at night in Folsom Prison in 1968. So the whole show is going to be focused basically around the record. Then going to be mainly around that that era. Yeah. So uh, I take a little bit of liberties. There's going to be some songs that that are are not particularly on that record but are germane to the fact that we're in a prison um so i would say it's about 70 75 percent music 25 percent drama so there is a plot that goes through the whole thing um there are a, a bit of acted scenes going on but it's primarily music i i think it's a beautiful balance between both but by the time you get kind of get used to music um, some more drama or dialogue comes in to, to forward the, the plot, to forward the story, and it, it keeps the audience uh, involved and compelled. Now, last question here. Where can people uh, find information on Church of Cash, like your social media, or just to keep up to date with what's going on with the band and shows that are coming up? Very easy. I have churchofcashmusic.com that has all of the band's scheduling, what's going on, and not only are we are touring a lot in the region, but we also tour nationally and internationally. We put out records. Uh, we write the Folsom Prison experience. We're, we're, we're trying to bring more than just what a band could bring to entertainment. I'm trying to bring it all in. I have a YouTube channel that I have a lot of fun video vlogs of being on tour or analyzing Johnny Cash's career. So I'm trying to take it to the extra extra step and make it a lot of fun, not only just seeing another band, which there's billions of bands out there. I want us to be a, 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 like a step above, if you will, by bringing this experience and this study of Johnny Cash um, to the forefront. 
So churchofcashmusic.com. I tell you what, you just Google Church of Cash, you'll find us. We're out there. We we tour a lot. We have a lot of articles written about us. So it'd be very easy to find. But, you know, say if you have Facebook, it's easy. Uh, search for us on Facebook or Instagram. We're all out there. And we hope to see you guys there because not more important than ever it is to follow the bands that you enjoy, not only for you to keep updated to what the band is doing, but nowadays it doesn't really matter how great or good or quality the band is people like i would say uh people that run that run big events or festivals they look more at your social media likes and follows than they i guess they would even the quality of the act and i want to believe that our act is very is a quality act we won the the best tribute act of the upper Midwest two years in a row and in, in 2019 and 2021. And then also last year we were inducted into the Minnesota music hall of fame. So I think that would attribute to the quality of the act. And, and I hope that your listeners and the people out there could come aboard and, and, and join us for this great event that's happening this Saturday in Dawson. All right. I want to thank you, Jay, for your time. It was great talking to you. Appreciate the time. Thank you. Thanks for watching everybody.